My 25 year corporate career to ride motorcycles and tell stories. This time that adventure brings me to just outside of Chicago. That's where one couple has turned their loss into a great effort to fight an epidemic hurting our country. That's where we start this episode of the Biker Dad TV show. Let's roll. On this episode of Biker Dad. Moms on motorcycles teaming up to fight fentanyl. He was just deceived to death. Back on two when a motorcycle crash is actually a blessing. Thank God for a good Samaritan. Here comes another blessing. Plus, I take a ride on a hot rod sports team for the bike of the week. And suck, bang, blow. What happened when I got a little too close to the burnout pit? Have you ever sat at your job and thought, what if I just got up and left? Tell that horrible boss to take this job and shove it. Have you ever wanted to just walk out? What about burnout? Well, that's exactly what I did, but I didn't just quit. I left my 25 year corporate career to ride motorcycles and tell your story. Daytona Beach, Florida, where you can actually drive onto the beach. Rick Fairless, a legend of his own, introduced me to Richard Rollins, Mayfield, Kentucky, Southeast Missouri, beautiful city of Knoxville, Tennessee, Gold Coast of Mississippi, the Florida coast in the Tampa Bay area, the Orange County Choppers, Roadhouse and Museum, talking to Paul Tuttle Sr. himself. But make no mistake, this is not a show about motorcycles or even about me. Instead, I traveled across the country to meet the people who use their passion for motorcycles to make their communities stronger, safer, and better. This is Biker Dad. On the road in Woodstock, Illinois, and as you can see, a huge turnout on a beautiful day to ride. A beautiful ride for a not so beautiful cause. The victims of fentanyl. As you can see, people are riding with them on their windshields. Today, we made an executive decision six years ago that my son would not be a statistic and he would not just be chalked up on the books as a number. So here we are remembering everyone's child that they've lost because they are not statistics, they're human beings. My son snorted what he thought was cocaine and his best friend had spiked it with fentanyl, which killed him instantly. Hi, my name is Cami Velsi. I'm from California. Emilio Velsi, he was 19 years old when he passed away. Stacy James and I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Hagen was 22. He thought he was getting cocaine. Five times the lethal dose of fentanyl was in it. Terry Almanza, I lost my daughter Sydney, who was 18 years old. Uh, my name's Kathy Del Porto. My son Adam died from fentanyl poisoning on March 18th of this year. 31. I came home from a concert and I got a call that he was dead. You know, it's like. I took my eyes off him because I thought he was good, you know? It's just, people say like, I can't even imagine, and I say neither can I, and I'm living it. So John died on July 26th of 2016, and he was buried on his 23rd birthday, which is July 30th. So today we should be celebrating his 29th birthday, but he is forever 22. Having wisdom teeth pain and, um, he was telling me about it and we were going to, on Monday, our insurance was changing over. So I said, you know, babe, let's just wait till that happens and we can get your, uh, you a better surgeon and get your wisdom teeth out. And he's like, okay. Um, however, over the weekend, he purchased what he thought was a Percocet from a coworker and he purchased three of them and the night of March 8th or early morning hours of March 9th, he took one of the fake uh, Percocets and it contained all fentanyl. A little bit of meth was in it and I think they used meth as fillers, but um, it was all fentanyl. He was only 19 years old. And, um, you know, I think he's in a different demographic of experimenter, self-medicator, um, first time user, um, and he was just deceived to death. He was gone within two minutes. Um, that wasn't a dose that Narcan was gonna pull him out of. Um, Hagen was the brightest light. 
he had the biggest heart, but he also suffered with mental illness. And so he had been on different medications for his depression, his anxiety, and he didn't like the way the pharmaceuticals made him feel. It's just an amazing young lady, uh, beautiful, smart, kind, um, just an amazing uh, team. And um, unfortunately, uh, she had struggled with some um, childhood trauma and friends shared, hey, take this MDMA and um, you can kind of escape your problems. Sid took some MDMA, um, didn't know what she was doing and um, sadly died. We are at the town center of Carroll Stream, Illinois. Today is the ride for John earlier today. So I got the cuts on. We had, a, we had a great ride. We went from Woodstock Harley-Davidson out to uh, Hobnobbers in Sycamore, Illinois, and then down here to the town center of Carroll Stream. So we rode today for thousands of kids who unfortunately didn't get a second chance in life. They took something that was tainted with fentanyl and it killed them. And their families are here. The biker community is here, supports this ride. This is the sixth year. There are boards up everywhere with pictures of these children. And they look like your own kids, like your neighbors, your nephews, your nieces. You know, and they weren't drug addicts. You know, so oh, they're just drug addicts. No, they took, they, a lot of them, you know, succumbed to peer pressure. Hey, try this, this is really cool. Except for that it was laced with something that uh, three uh, grains of salt worth will kill you. And that's fentanyl. It's pouring across our border, it's been coming for a while. For those who don't know, it's actually, you know, pure fentanyl is actually used in surgery for anesthesia. Caught a coyote with a backpack full of this stuff. It's enough to wipe out the state of California. I mean, that's how, how deadly this poison is. The last count I heard, there was over 150 bikes on the ride. Everyone rode well, they rode safe. We do a lot of charity work of all types. Veterans, uh, ride groups, this again affects children who've been unfortunately lost their lives due to fentanyl poisoning. And anything we can do to support the community and motorcycle riders particularly, we're all about. It's really, it's very, very sad. It's a sad state of our world and we're just trying to do our little piece to help these families that have been through this tragedy and hopefully educate other people to be wary of situations like this and hopefully that they don't end up in the same situation. Just really happy to see the biker community join in and understand where we're coming from and to understand how the passion on my heart, where this comes from, and for them to care about these children as much as I do. All the parents were lined up on the streets taking videos and waving to them and it was very emotional. It was very beautiful. It was, um, you know, a moment that just gets to your soul and um, there was lots of tears. We're so very thankful um, for people that don't even know our children, our loved ones, to come out to an event like this and uh, ride in honor of our, of our loved ones. It's difficult to be here as a parent, you know, and then for you know, people who don't even know us to come out and travel from all over the place to ride for our kids. Um, it's, it's just amazing, so thank you. You know, there's just, it cannot be understated the bond that grieving mothers have with one another. Um, oftentimes we're very secluded, just a few of us in each town, and all of us being together is, it rejuvenates us. It, it's, it's something that, that picks us up and sets us out to continue living life without our children. So I come because I love the bikes. I come because I love Kathy and Rob, and, and I come to be with my sisters. and horsepower. Every year, hundreds of bikers ride to this ranch in Stapleton, Alabama on a mission to help veterans dealing with PTSD. We're here today at, uh, at the equine farm that uh, uses horses for severe PTSD veterans for therapy. And we're doing a fundraiser to help her continue her mission of helping vets. Um, I'm Carrie Watley. I'm a licensed counselor and I use horses as part of the therapy process uh, with veterans, youth, and families. And we are so honored to have the CVMA out here today. They do a fundraiser for us every year, Horses for Heroes. 
we work with PTSD, transitioning to civilian life, and really any veteran. If you're struggling with sleep, with relationships, with just getting back in the groove again, please come visit us and uh, we'd love to have you back. A lot of our veterans coming back from Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, even our Vietnam vets that are still here, uh, they have some severe problems, you know, readjusting into civilian life. And uh, the equine therapy seems to be a great solution and help to them. And uh, we, we just think it's a great cause and we're, we're just trying to help her out so she can continue to help veterans. The suicide rate for veterans is two times higher than the average population. The divorce rate is three times higher, and you're also three times as likely to have a substance abuse issue. So our veterans just don't really get the help or support that they need, and that's what we try to do out here with horses. I, I love horses, and and you know just to be able to be around them and and uh, have them respond to you, it, it, it's an awesome feeling. And uh, you know it, it, that's a 1,200-pound animal and you're standing right next to it and it, all it wants you to do is love on it and it, it's, it's a good feeling they're very calming they're very disarming and so if you're not in a good place or you're not very centered they can kind of help you get that way in a way that a traditional therapy session wouldn't but we also talk about real tools we don't like to waste people's times when they are out here we want to give you more tools for your toolbox so that you can sleep better and have better relationships and enjoy your life again horses have an innate ability to sense what a person's feeling. If you're feeling fear or anxiety or whatever, they, they sense that and they can tell uh, how you're feeling and they respond to your feelings and, and they relate to that and they, they help bring you out of it. These guys are the most amazing community I have ever been around. Um, biker dad, biker people, it's just a whole other world of people who are really, really wanting to serve each other. It's just incredible. I had no idea until I got exposed to bikers how much they do for the community. So when you see a biker out on the road, be extra nice and wave at them because they're probably doing something awesome. My name is Jessica Sheehan and I am a member of the War Dogs Charity Riders uh, out of Illinois. What Motorcycle Safety Lawyers does is they're there for you if you're in an accident, but most importantly is they have classes that you can take. When you take the motorcycle safety class, you learn how to help out a motorcyclist that goes down. And there's a lot more involved when a motorcyclist goes down and that could be uh, moving them off the road safely where they're not going to get more injured or, or they're not going to get hit again or what have you. And then also how to remove a helmet properly, how to uh, perform CPR should you need to do that, how to splint an arm or uh, take care of a broken leg the right way. When I'm on a long trip and I have to carry so much stuff, I can't even think about having fun. It just kind of sucks. But I found something really cool. It's called Camp Easy Ride. They set up everything for you when you get there and they tear it all down when you leave. And I'll be camping with Camp Easy Ride at Daytona Biketoberfest. You get to party your butt off each night back at your own Glamour Tent compound. Simply arrive, party, drop, repeat, and leave. We'll do a trip right now at CampEasyRide.com. Now here's the Biker Dad Bike of the Week. What's up everybody, Steve Knight over here at Orly. Looking at a 2009 XR1200. It's not very often we get one of these bikes here in the shop for sale. This one's really, really cool because it's already got the exhaust gun to it. It's got roughly 19,000 miles on it. It is super clean. There's no scrapes, no dents, no dings on the bike. And it does have some really cool sliders, uh, curb sliders down there on the, the front end. 
This is a really, really cool motorcycle. Seat position's a little different. The ride height's higher than your normal Sportster. And the guy that owned it before spent crazy amounts of money on these bad boys right here. And if, I don't know if I've actually talked about my love for Owen suspension products on your show before, but easily the, the best suspension product on the market, the Digital Speedo. Oh, wow. yeah. 2000, that's fancy. And it's got a fuel light on it, which is different for a Sportster. Little gas thing right there, it's pretty cool. Definitely a fun little bike. It's a blast to ride. The setup is a lot different, so you really got to be careful when you start riding it. At first, I was braking on the exhaust pipe instead of the, the foot brake. The stance is just completely different than what you're used to. And talk about old school, you got to still turn the key on. I forgot to do that too. But come check out the XR1200 Sportster and ask to see the Biker Dad Bike of the Week, and they'll give you a free sticker and a free ride, which is even better. All right. segments are brought to you by the Motorcycle Safety Lawyers and the National Academy of Motorcycle Injury Lawyers. You may not think this way, but I've heard this more than one time on my adventures here on the road. A motorcycle crash that actually turned into a blessing. And for this couple, it's more than one blessing, it's many blessings. And they are working to get back on to. God has truly blessed us. On that day, we did have a blessing. We're both alive. My wife was in here a lot more than I was. She had a broken clavicle. She had a brain bleed. She had uh, broken ribs. Some of those ribs were broken in several places. I had a dislocated shoulder, which in turn caused me to have to have uh, rotator cuff surgery. Praise God. Yeah. Um, we haven't got another bike yet, but I just want you to know that I've had people tell me, well, why do you get the blessings of a bike? You had an accident on same day. Well, it's not the fact that we had accident, but it was the blessings that we received after. When I started our prayer chain at our church, and we called, and uh, my mother-in-law called the church here, prayer started going out for me and my wife. Her brain bleed was gone overnight. That's a miracle, okay? And God caused that miracle. That's a blessing. We haven't had to pay any medical bills. That's a blessing. Now, the person that caused the accident left the scene. We didn't know who it was. He didn't have a license plate. He didn't have anything. When I talked to the police officer, he told me he didn't know yet. And thank God for a good Samaritan. Here comes another blessing. A good Samaritan followed that lady. I want you to know that lady drove around the drugstore, got back on 98, and drove right past us. And she told the police officer she didn't know there was an accident. But thank God we found out who the lady was by the graciousness of that gentleman that followed her. That, my friends, is a blessing. And again, we haven't had to pay any medical bills. I'm sorry. I want you to know. She flew in a helicopter. Anybody have an idea how much a helicopter ride costs? $39,990.39. So we were blessed. We were blessed. We're here. We're alive. And we get to talk about it. And I thank God for that.
This is Biker Day. Hi, I'm Mark Schumann from Motorcycle Safety Lawyers and Schumann Legal. Well, I've been practicing law for 35 years and been handling motorcycle cases ever since then. We've really gotten big into supporting the motorcycle community. We do things such as we sponsor an accident scene management class, which is a six hour class taught by road guardians. And it teaches you about its first aid, some first aid, some CPR, about what to do if you are in a crash on the road and waiting for first responders. It can really help save lives. So there's a basic course, we even, there's even an advanced course. So we support that. We support a lot of charity rides. We do a lot of events with veterans. We're involved with War Dogs, which is a phenomenal charity. They take rescue dogs, train them, and give them as service animals to the uh, military veterans. This is Biker Dad, brought to you by the Motorcycle Safety Lawyers and the National Academy of Motorcycle Injury Lawyers. Hi there, this is Chris Best, the Biker Dad. I'm just here to let you know that myself and the hundreds of thousands of people who follow us on social media and watch the TV show are here to help. Do you need help with something? Give me a call, that's my number right there, 251-402-6392. Especially if you need legal help, I have an army of lawyers across the country who can help you with injuries after motorcycle crashes especially, but other stuff like crime and everything else too. So give me a call, 251-402-6392. When I'm on a long trip and I have to carry so much stuff, I can't even think about having fun. It just kind of sucks. Right now, something really cool. It's called Camp Easy Ride. They set up everything for you when you get there and they tear it all down when you leave. And I'll be camping with Camp Easy Ride at Daytona Biketoberfest. You get to party your butt off each night back at your own Glamour Tent compound. Simply arrive, party, drop, repeat, and leave. Book we'll your trip right now at CampEasyRide.com. Now, this week's Biker Dad Tech Tip. Biker Dad Tech Tip. i Neil Cater from Harley Davidson. Got a, a fun one today. I have a lot of customers that ride in and they'll walk through the service. Hey, I need some help. My uh, kickstand spring, I, I knocked it off. You know, whether you're at a bike event riding through a field and you hit a pothole, decided to jump off the wrong curb. And sometimes it can happen. Harley's had this set up for a lot of years now, and uh, whether it's a half inch, a three quarter, or I think 11 sixteenths, this is a really easy way to do. Got to have a buddy. Here's Steve pulling up. Okay, so let's just say it's flopping around. You come in and it's uh, you buy a, a, a zip strip. You go ahead and pop this off. This is where you, you want to make sure that you've got held firmly. All right. Here's the fun part: because if you let go, you can bash the fender. Pull that right off. Move forward. And boom, there's your spring. So there's no stretching, no screaming. <laughs> Popping it right back on. Give me just a second. Older ones that, that sometimes the setup is a little bit different. Like I said, the nut size, but uh, same basic principle. So you can you can damage some things if you don't have a good hand on it. But if you've ever uh, been a little kid playing with a uh, old screen door. Pop the spring a couple times, this should be no problem. So if you're in a pinch, you know, it's getting it tight on there, but if you're at your garage or at your shop, watch like, make sure you got proper torque and some, sometimes some blue lock tight doesn't hurt a bit. So look at that. In less than five minutes, we popped it on and off. This is Biker Dad, brought to you by the Motorcycle Safety Lawyers and the National Academy of in the last month we've had six or seven new cases and only one of them has proper insurance and they're horrific injuries one person lost his leg and some of the cases is only fifty or a hundred thousand dollars of coverage which is a fraction of what they should be getting compensated so we're very big on promoting and educating people the right type of insurance to get before they get into an accident so that if it happens they are properly covered you can't rely on the other party having proper coverage. So you have to cover yourself. If you have coverage of 250,000 or 500 or a million dollar umbrella, then you are protected up to that amount for your, for your own bodily injuries. So it's really, really important. 
We don't sell insurance, so I'm not trying to sell anything, but I, I like educating the public beforehand so that if they get into a bad accident, they are properly covered. Biker Dad is brought to you in Wisconsin by Motorcycle Safety Lawyer. I'd like to thank the Motorcycle Safety Lawyers and the National Academy of Motorcycle Injury Lawyers for this 2019 Harley-Davidson Heritage Classic Soft Tool that I won. Can't say enough how hard they've worked with me and how they've treated me with the utmost of respect. Believe me, when I say they work hard for you, I mean it. Kind of the bike of my dreams, man. I can tell you, ever since these guys notified me, it's like I've been living a dream. Biker Dad Road Trip. In Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, one of the hot spots for bikers, whether it's during a rally or any other time of the year, is Suck, Bang, and Blow. And Suck, Bang, and Blow is all about internal combustion. It's also all about the burnout pit. Hundreds, sometimes thousands flock here to watch people waste the tires on their motorcycles. And I got a close up look at the action. Maybe a little too close. That's it for this week's episode of the Biker Dad TV show from Illinois with great riding. My child's life matters. The War Dogs, charity riders, and motorcycle safety lawyers. Until next time, please look twice for motorcycles.